In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to turn a regular photo like this into a detailed pixel art environment complete with spaceships, flying cars, and futuristic buildings. I'll be using the freely available browser-based editor called Photop. If you're expecting this tutorial to be in Photoshop, you will still be able to follow along. There'll be a few minor differences. Please leave a comment below if you'd rather me make this in Photoshop. So first of all, you'll need to access the images that we're gonna use to base this image from. They are in the description below. You're gonna need to download the city background image here. It was originally this image, but I removed the skyscraper. There is a tutorial linked in the description below showing you how to remove the skyscraper which would be handy for something like this tutorial um, and also to show you how to convert the building into something that's destroyed like this but that's in the description below so to begin with you'll need to open the image that you've just downloaded to do that go to file open and open the image that you've just downloaded there are other ones to choose from in this folder here the first thing you're going to want to do is to resize the image to do that go to image image size and you can see here that it's over 4300 pixels pixels, which is more than double the resolution of a standard TV screen. And this is going to lag out most devices that my students have. So for the width, just type in 500 like this. And when you click away, the height will automatically become the correct for the ratio. Make sure that you set the interpolation from bilinear to nearest neighbor. This here will make sure that when the image is resized, it will look more like pixel art than a blurry image. Hit OK and the image will become a lot smaller. This is the first step in converting an image ready for pixel art is simply reducing its size. Next, we're going to need to cut the sky out from the environment to change it up a bit. To do that, go over to your quick selection tool, which is W on the keyboard. Click and hold on whatever shape you see here. It might look like a blob in a dotted line. Change it down to the quick selection tool. Then just simply click and drag over any of the buildings down here, and it should automatically select the horizon like this. If there are any areas that you're not happy with, then you may need to manually go in with the lasso tool, uh, hold shift to add to a selection or hold alt to take away from a selection. Once you've got the bottom of your image selected like this, you can copy and paste it onto its own layer by doing control J for duplicate, control J. Now, if I turn off my background layer, I have the bottom on its own like that. The next thing I'm going to do is try to make the sky more like this image here, where it's one simple gradient going from the top to the bottom. If we don't do this step, you'll end up with a sky with lots of banding that goes in circles like this. If there is any banding in my image, I'd rather it be horizontal in the sort of way you'd see in a Sega Mega Drive game or something like that. To do that, click on your background layer, get your rectangle selection tool, which is M on the keyboard, and drag a vertical rectangle like this through the part of your image where the mountains on the horizon are at their lowest, which for me, I've identified to be this point here. This is the lowest part of the sky that I can see see in the entire image. I'm then going to invert my selection by doing control shift I or if you don't have a keyboard it's select inverse. Now hit delete. Now deselect with control D or select deselect. Now let's stretch that rectangle out to fill up the whole sky. To do that go up to your move tool which is V on the keyboard and make sure that transform controls is ticked. Select your background layer, which will be this very thin rectangle. You may need to zoom in with Alt and scroll or pinch and zoom and stretch this rectangle out. out. If you're following this in Photoshop, you will need to hold Shift in order to stretch an image. If you're doing this in Photop, you do not need to hold Shift to stretch the image. Stretch the image out like this. And when you're done, hit Enter on the keyboard or confirm at the top. And you'll end up with a nice gradient going from the top to the bottom like this that will avoid any strange issues later on like this. Now we're gonna to want to convert our, the bottom part of our image into less colors. The style of art that we're doing is often called 8-bit art, which is often seen in color bands like this. We have far fewer colors to work with to create your game. 8-bit Mario, for example, only had three colors for the artist to use to make him up. We're not going to follow this science exactly, but we're going to just give it the illusion of being 8-bit. So go to your layer one, which is your top layer. Then go to image, 
adjustments posterize this will reduce the number of colors by default it's set to three and as you can see it looks quite terrible but if you increase the number of levels eventually you get the full realistic photo but if you lower it to about eight levels you end up seeing bands of color in your buildings like this hit okay when you're done now at the moment these colors look quite nasty but we're going to fix that with a gradient overlay if you google search pixel art city you'll see lots of other images that have color palettes that you may want to choose from that work with you so feel free to copy an image of another artist and paste it in like i'm about to do and you can steal colors from that i'm going to copy the colors from my own image to avoid plagiarism claims so i'm just going to screenshot this command shift s on a windows computer and paste it into here and drag the layer to the top if you've just saved an image from the internet and you would like to put it into to this document then you're going to need to go to file open in place and place in an image screenshotted from the internet or something and it will go in here like that you're going to need to resize that down by going to your move tool transform controls at the top and scale it down so that you can see your image as well now go down to your layer one layer which is just beneath the image you've downloaded from the internet or if you have and we're going to need to click on the circle at the bottom here that's called adjustment layer there's a black and white circle click on that and go to gradient map you may have to scroll scroll down in the menu to see this because it's up near the bottom when you click on this your image will go black and white click on the shiny gradient map bar here and the gradient editor comes up in Photoshop this does actually appear in a section above your layers over here but you can follow the same tips to follow along so let's double click on the black square at the bottom left like this and we're going to sample the darkest color from the image which for me is this dark purple here hit OK for the bright white square on the right double click on that and change it to the lightest color that you can see in the image and hit OK. If you can't double click because you're on a mobile device or something, you may need to just click on one of these squares and then change the color from down here like that. If you want, you can add a third color to your gradient by clicking near the middle like this and then changing the color from down here. So I could go in and introduce a slightly more vibrant shade of purple like this as things go into the distance. And if you want to change how the gradient flows through your image, you can drag the little black square left or right here, which will kind of make your image look more or less foggy, which is really quite cool. Once you've got your gradient set up and you're happy, hit OK in the gradient editor and you can hit the word pro here to hide the properties for this layer. I'm now going to delete the evidence of the image that I stole the colors from by clicking on its layer and hitting delete. If you're having an issue there where you couldn't sample colors from the image because it was already underneath the gradient, you will need to move this above the gradient or be on layer one when you applied the gradient overlay as that will appear just above the layer that you're on. So I'm going to delete this layer and we can now start to paint in some more blocky terrain down here. Notice in the one that I made earlier that all of my layers of cities have these quite strong silhouettes like this, whereas our image at the moment is quite grainy like this. So I'm going to go to my brush tool, change it from the brush into a pencil. So hit B on the keyboard, change the paint brush into a pencil. At the top, you'll see a number beneath a circle. Click on that. That brings up your brush settings or you can right click if you have a mouse. Either way, you're going to want to choose this brush here. It's on the second row on the left. It's the number 20 beneath the square. Click on that and to change the size of your brush, you can obviously drag the slider here, right click and drag the slider there or use the square brackets on the keyboard, whichever you prefer. Keep your brush at about 20 pixels to start with though. And we're going to need to sample some colors. I'm going to need to merge these layers. Otherwise, my color sampling won't work properly. So I'm now going to right click on whatever layer is at the top of my layers and do either merge down or flatten image. It doesn't matter that we've merged them because we've done what we need to with the sky. Now that you've flattened your image, you can sample the colors from it easily. And I'm going to create a new layer to do the next bunch of pixel work with. So I've created a new layer at the bottom with a folded piece of paper. And I'm now going to sample from the furthest layer where the buildings look really gnarly, which for me is this layer here. So if you hold Alt, while you're in your pencil tool and click on a color, you'll see that that color gets chosen for your color palette down here. And now you can paint with that exact color. If you can do not have a keyboard, you're gonna have to click on the black square at the top of your color swatch here. Move your mouse away from the color picker and sample the color like that. It's just a little bit slower. Make your brush as big or as small as you like. And mine's about 15 now. And if you just kind of click and put little squares in your image like this here and there, 
especially in any areas that look particularly messy, it will just give it more of a solid look and it will look less detailed and less like a photograph even more. You can hold shift if you want to create sort of straight lines like that or hold shift while you paint if you want to do things like chimneys. So you can make your brush really small and hold shift and you end up with very small straight lines like this and you can end up creating your own city skyline with that. Once you finish doing the furthest layer that is quite crazy, the layers that are a bit more pink and purple are so small you can barely see there's anything wrong with them. You're going to need to go down now and choose the next layer of darkness which is a slightly darker one here. I'm going to hold alt, click on that make my brush a bit bigger for this one and just kind of paint over here and just click and paint down vertically. You kind of end up with a bit more of a solid shape like that. We're going to add more detailed buildings later on. These are just like less important things here, but it's important that you do not leave it with all this sort of grungy mess here and you fill it in with these squarey shapes like that. And now for the foreground layer, hold alt and sample that or again, just click on your main color here and sample it from there. Once you get to the very close stuff, you can hold shift and do dot 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 to add kind of like perspective to things like this. As the buildings get closer towards you, they may have more perspective on. The final step, you may just want to go in and add a few small uh, antennas or details if you wanted to. To do that, make your brush really small. Use the left square bracket to make it about one pixel. And if you click and hold your mouse and then hold shift for a long time while still clicking and holding your mouse, you can paint up like this. So if I make my left square bracket to make it even smaller, you can just sort of have antennas like this that just kind of makes it look a bit more detailed and slightly more realistic in a pixel art way. So I'm holding alt to sample the next layer of buildings back. Just putting random antennas on stuff like that because in the future everyone needs good Wi-Fi or something like that. That's looking a bit more realistic now. So now that this looks way better, we're going to start to put in our own main hero buildings into this. To do that, make a new layer. Feel free to name your layers. I'm going to call this one Skyline Blocks and the new layer that I'm going to paint on is going to be called main building. Now for this, we're going to use the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool to choose a shape for our building before actually coloring it in. So please be on your main building layer and go over to hit L on the keyboard to the polygonal lasso tool. Choose the polygonal lasso tool. To use this tool, you just do click and you do dot to dot and eventually go back to where you started and you end up with a selection. If you can't join up with where you started, simply double click near where you started and it will finish the selection for you. To deselect, you're going to need to do control D. So if you make a mistake like this, hit control D to deselect or go to select deselect. So just to clarify with this tool, if you click and hold shift, it will create a perfectly straight line no matter where your mouse is. It creates vertical lines, diagonal lines and horizontal lines. So just create a rough shape for a skyscraper. Try and include some 45 degree angles in it as it will help it look slightly more futuristic than just having a boring old rectangle. And you can have bits that kind of go in a bit like that. Uh, structural integrity is overrated in the future. And if you move your mouse near the bottom of the screen, it will scroll down for you. Make sure that the building that you draw does go quite far down to the bottom of the image. When you go back to near where you started, double click and it will finish the selection. If you accidentally click away again and your selection disappears, just do control Z and it will come back. If when you're using this tool, you make a mistake when you click, hit the backspace arrow on the keyboard and it will undo the last click that you did and save you loads of time starting from scratch. Once you've got your shape, you can now go over to your paint bucket tool. Hit G on the keyboard and you'll see that it selects the gradient tool by default. Click and hold on that and change it into the paint bucket tool. Now at the top, you're going to need to untick where it says anti-alias. This will create much better diagonal lines for pixel art and create less of a blurry effect. Now sample a color of one of your buildings in the distance here and this will make the building look like it's that far away. Just for the sake of this tutorial, choose a color that isn't the darkest one. You'll see why in a minute. So with Alt on the keyboard, I'm going to sample my paint bucket over this area here or just click on your color swatch, click there, hit OK and now fill in the shape that you've just drawn. Do control D to deselect. When you do control D to deselect, you'll notice that even though we turned anti-alias off, there's still some kind of fade going around the edge of your building. If you do control Z to undo just once or do edit undo, your selection should now come back. 
a tip for pixel art is to just fill and click and just keep filling in your image again and again and again. The more you click, I think I've clicked like 50 times here, the sharper the edges will be. So as you can see, I've clicked about 50 times until my edges on the diagonals are perfectly filled and solid. Then control D to deselect. It now looks a lot more like pixel art. You can now make any further changes you want to your building. But before you do that, I just want to show you how we're going to get the building to be cut out by the shape of these foreground buildings here. It would take a long time for us to go in with the eraser tool and scribble out the bottom of this building so that it fits with these. So an easier way is simply to do this. Just above your layers, click on the word normal and change it to darken. And now, wherever your building goes, it will be behind that band of buildings in the foreground. If you were to sample now a lighter color of a building in the distance, let's say like this mountain here, and fill it in, the building immediately gets pushed further back and PhotoP knows that it should be in a distance like this, super far away, like some kind of giant mega structure in the distance. Or if you sample a foreground color and fill it in, it then becomes like it's very close to the camera like this. Really smart stuff. So it looks good in my opinion, just to have the second color back here. Let's make this building ever so slightly darker so that it stands out from the band of buildings that it's in. To do that, you can do image, adjustments, levels and just drag the middle square here slightly to the right. This is a slightly more intuitive way of pushing your building either closer or further away, but I'm just gonna do it so it's ever so slightly darker like this. So it's darker than the buildings behind it and lighter than the buildings in front of it like that. Hit okay when you're done. You can now edit the shape if you like. If you want to go back to your polygonal lasso tool, you can go in and you can do things like adding holes in your building like this, for example, I'm holding shift there to double click and I can then hit delete and control D to deselect. And again, if you notice any of this sort of fading going on, just go back with your paint bucket tool and click to fill it back in again and it will solve that problem. I just need to do my levels again which is control L and darken that to undo that. Now let's put on some details on this building here. First of all, let's add some antennas to the top. Go back to your pencil tool, which is B for brush. Hold Alt and sample on whatever color your building is to make sure that the top color here is the same color as your building. You can then use a single pixel brush with the left square bracket to make it really small and just hold Shift on the keyboard while you click and drag with your mouse. This may take some practice. Undo if you make a mistake. Great, now we can add some highlights to the side of our building just to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. To do that, go back to your polygonal lasso tool and the simplest way is to just click and hold shift and just allow for and try and trace the left side of the building like this, up like that. And then click around the left-hand side like this and join it back up at the bottom like that. So I've now selected just a slice of the left hand side of my building over here. I'm now going to lighten that up. I may also want to just choose a small area down here just for effect. Once you've got that, I hold shift there to add to my selection or you can use this to here to add to your selection as well. Now let's make this brighter by going back to levels, which is control L or image adjustments levels. Drag the middle square here slightly further to the left, but only ever so slightly. If you do it too much, it looks stupid and it eventually disappears. Just do it ever so slightly lighter like that, hit OK. And you can now see that the building has a slight 3D effect going on it there. If you didn't like it, you could go back to Control L and drag it slightly that way if you want. It's supposed to be very subtle, barely noticeable like that. Any parts of the building that are facing up, like this section here, basically it's facing the sky, you could select that very carefully like this. And again, do Control L and make that lighter again because it should be brighter as it's facing the sky. When you do Control D, you've now got a proper 3D effect going on on the building that you've drawn. This is great. Control L and lighten the building up like that. Now let's add the windows on this building. To put windows on this building, make sure you've downloaded the matrix code blue image from here. I'm using the matrix code because if you go to Google and type in windows texture at night, you end up with these very zoomed in images that will look very boring and be a complete nightmare to apply to our image quickly. Whereas matrix code you'll see will work really well. So go file, open and place. And now place the matrix code into your image. It will become much bigger like this. By default, it has brought up some kind of transform 
tool here, immediately, immediately go to where it says bilinear and change it to nearest neighbor. Immediately you'll notice it becomes super crisp, like pixel art when you do that. Scale this image down now. If you cannot seem to scale the image, make sure you go to your move tool and scale it down. If you already can see these corner dots, then you'll be fine. If you can't see the corner dots, make sure you tick show transform controls. And if you hold shift while you scale, it will retain its proportion so you don't stretch the image. Now you could have vertical windows like this, which looks really futuristic. Or if you hold shift while moving your mouse outside of the box and then clicking, you can then rotate the image by set increments like that. So you get it eventually at 90 degrees. You can now let go of shift and continue to move this over your building. Now, let's see if we can see through the darker areas of this and only reveal the light areas. To do that, just above your layer, just click where it says normal and we're going to use a blending mode for screen. Look at that. It gets rid of all the dark parts of the image straight away and you can then start to distort it if needed. So go to your move tool. Feel free to resize that down some more. And I'm just resizing it so it's about there and hit enter when you're done. Now we're going to need to make it fit the shape of our building. The easiest way to do that is to trim off these using the shape of our building selection. You'll first need to rasterize the layer though for the matrix code so that it works. Right click in your matrix code layer and do rasterize or go to layer at the top and rasterize. If it's grayed out, it's already been done. This means you can now edit the image and remove bits from it. If your building has perspective, like the one that I did earlier has a slight angle at the top, then you may want to hold control on the keyboard and then you can warp the image like that. If you don't have a keyboard, go to edit, transform, distort, and drag the image to add perspective. I'm gonna keep this really simple though for, for reasons and I'm happy with that, I hit escape there. Now, hold the control button on the keyboard, move your mouse over to the thumbnail of your main building and click on the thumbnail of your main building to load its selection in like this. If you don't have a keyboard, you, you really need one, but go to the magic wand tool, which is W, choose a magic wand, and then click on your main building to load its selection in with that. Make sure that anti-alias is off before you do that. So I have to undo my click for the magic wand there, make sure anti-alias is off, click on the building and it will load its selection in there. But it's way faster to hold control and click on the layer. Now, make sure you're on your matrix code layer, but your selection is still there. Now invert your selection by going to select inverse and then on the keyboard hit delete or go to your eraser tool and scribble it out or something like that. It's control D to deselect. So that's a good start for our building. We're now going to need to do some more manual things to make the windows look a little bit more cut out. Go to your polygonal lasso tool and you can just click like this on the side of your building to give it a bit of a border. What I'm aiming for is something kind of like this here where the windows are contained within a thick border of the building. So you do a selection like that and it's control D to deselect. You could also go to your eraser tool, which is E. And as long as the mode for the eraser is set to pencil, your eraser will now have hard edges. And you can of course hold shift on the keyboard while painting to create nice straight lines and do some dot to dot clicks if you want as well like that just to have that going and now when you get to the bottom of the other buildings down here you will have to manually paint them out annoyingly like that so I'm just holding shift and doing dot to dot clicks here for this to work. You now get that effect. If you want to have these zigzag lines going through your building, then again, just make your paintbrush really small, maybe about five or six pixels and just do a click and hold shift and click somewhere else and hold shift and click somewhere else and you can create a sort of zigzag effect like that if you want. Don't think it works super well on this building here. So I've got that effect going on there like that, which I'm quite happy with. Finally, let's add some little glowing lights on the building and then the building's pretty much done. To do that, create a new layer and get your pencil tool. Set your pencil tool to be only one pixel and you're gonna want to paint a pure white pixel like this on the top of antennas or on the corners of your building like this. Before you paint too many, zoom in and if you double click on the empty gray part of your layer, you've got your layer styles. In here, you can go to outer glow and change the color for the outer glow, which is just here to something like uh, red. 
and increase the spread. So the values that I have for these lights are the opacity to 70%, the noise to one, spread to 15, size to five, and the color to pink here. And when you hit okay, any colors you now paint have this sort of really cool glowing effect on them like this. You could even do this to create some sweet neon signs if you wanted in your scene, or you can just go ahead and just put on some cool little glowing lights on top of your antennas like that. If you don't want it to be pure white, then you can change the color down here to be maybe a very light pink. Maybe that would be better for light in the distance. But it just adds that detail and makes it look lived in and slightly more believable. You may want to just swing through and add it to any other areas as well. Anything that isn't the focal point, feel free to make your actual color of the bright bit in the middle slightly duller like this so that less attention is drawn towards it like that. Great. If you want to add any other buildings, you can create them in the same way that we've done here. You can also add planets into the sky by downloading the planets from here. Drag in the planet that you've downloaded. It will come in very big like this. I can't see this, it's at the bottom. So I'll drag it to the top like that and set the blending mode from normal to screen. And when I resize it, I'm gonna just check that I'm holding shift on the keyboard to make sure I don't stretch the circle. And I'm gonna make sure the mode is indeed set to nearest neighbor. You can then rotate the image as desired like this. When you're done, hit enter. You'll notice a square around the edge of this. To make the square go away, do control M on the keyboard for curves or go to image adjustments levels and drag the middle slider slightly further to the right as you do this you'll notice the edge rectangle then completely disappears and the colors of the planet get slightly richer like that if you do it too much eventually it completely fades away but something like that should be good we want to reduce the number of colors on the saturn picture again which is image adjustments posterize and then you can increase or reduce the number of levels as desired like this just to create it make it look a little bit more retro uh, i'm also going to make this planet go pink to make the planet go pink you could just drag it uh, behind your building uh, first of all to about there and then do image adjustments hue and saturation and hit the colorize tick box and increase the saturation from zero and then drag the hue left or right until it's got the colors that you want i'm going to go for a sort of pinkish purple tone to this hit OK when you're done. Once you've finished with the planet, you're going to want to rasterize it so that it just keeps all of these. So right click and go rasterize and that will help you avoid any problems later. And then to create these spotlights, if you want, you just simply need to have a new layer. Name this one lights and get your selection tool and click a giant sort of triangle in the sky like this. Just do one to start with and do B for brush. And this time I am going to change my brush from a pencil into a regular paintbrush and make sure I choose a soft round brush like this number 24 one up here and or just make sure the hardness is set to zero. Increase your size to something quite big like 400 pixels and paint a bright shade of pink. So I'm just going to sample a color from my planet here and just paint that into the sky like that. That's obviously way too intense. So what you can do is go to the opacity of the layer and lower it like this. And then you can duplicate the layer with control J and get your move tool and rotate this layer if you want to have it shining through something like that. And you may want to move the original layer up a bit as well. One cool tip is for if you create a really good looking building in the distance and you select it, see what happens if you try to mirror it like this. Just duplicate the layer with control J. So there's two of them. Move the second one out of the way to the right and then go edit, transform, flip horizontal and kind of join it back up near itself like this. You might end up with a cool sort of superstructure in the distance like that. If you merge these two layers together by holding shift and selecting both of them and then do right click merge layers. If you don't have a keyboard, click on the top one instead and do right click merge down. They become the same layer and then you can set the blending mode to darken and it just throws it in the distance like that, like it's really far away. I would also recommend with a pencil tool sampling a very distant color like this and just painting some little random blobs like this into the sky uh, for little spaceships and or flying cars or something like that. It's pixel art, so they're going to be very low detail. You don't need to be good at drawing cars. Maybe you end up with a building design that you feel would look really cool if you tipped it sideways as if it was like some kind of spaceship like this. And then you could just kind of pop that up into the sky, make sure 
sure it's a very pale color and it looks like some cool battle cruiser in the distance like that or something so uh, i'd recommend just having a go painting these details and it'll look really cool notice that i've also gone in and thrown in some extra city lights from the matrix code down here and you can just go in and erase them to make sure it matches your buildings and just randomize it as much as you like and just paste it away and before you know it you've got a really cool looking pixel art city i hope that helps you learn a whole bunch of stuff about the interface of photo p and if you create any artwork that you'd like to share please do upload it to something like google drive and leave a link below i'd love to see what you guys have created with this